We've had a look before at how to do uh, interior render and how to place the lights. And so what we're particularly interested in is making sure that our 3D model is built, we've applied materials, and we've got enough lighting that the space will look illuminated. The main lighting that we're using is window lamps, and we find these in our lamp tool. And the ones that we're particularly interested in using is the Lightworks lamps window light for an interior render. So we've placed the lights in the space and we've used a couple others, a few down lights and general lights just to give a bit of feature. And now we need to do the test render to make sure that it's working. To find our photo render settings, we go document, creative imaging, photo render settings. The only light source we want to use is lamps. We've looked at the others before and, and realized that they're just rubbish. They're not really good at all. And we're doing what we call a test render at the moment, so we don't want it to take forever. We want it to be quite fast. So we're going to keep this method on better and the anti-aliasing on the one just up from faster, so essentially better again. For my size screen, I want 900 pixels width and the, uh, the height is determined by proportion of the 3D window and resolution 72, so it's going to be quite quick. We've got a background in as well, which is going to give us a background through our windows. You see here that it doesn't need to fill up the whole screen because I don't have windows in the whole screen, just in this middle section right hand side. Once we're ready to do the render, press OK. And it's a good idea if we've got a save view to update our current save view settings. To do this, we're going to right click on the save view, view settings, and then get current window settings. And that's just to update it. Now to do a photo render, I've got a little button on my toolbar, but we can also go document, creative imaging, photo render projection. Depending on the complexity of your model, the quality of your lights, and the amount of textures or surfaces you're using to create your space, this might be quite quick or it might take a while. Also the, the specs on your computer, the amount of RAM that you have and your video card will determine how long this takes as well. We see that my model is quite quick, quite simple, so the rendering is quite quick and it's not taking very long to finish this off. And this wasn't my first attempt, but I've, I'm seeing that the quality of the lights, the quality of the render is quite good. It looks quite realistic. The lighting is not too bright. It's not too dark. It's maybe a little bit overpowered here, and it's a very big scalp of light here, but it, it, it's dramatic, and I don't mind about that. I didn't time that render, but it didn't take very long, maybe 30 seconds or maybe a bit less. And that's a still render image. That's just one render. Now I need to do this a lot of times over and over again if I'm going to create an animation. So let's have a look at how to make an animation. If we go to floor plan, this is what we're seeing. Because I've got all my lights, my lamps on, it's, it's a bit messy. To create an animation in Archicad, we need to place our cameras. So I'm going to select a camera, which is down the bottom of the More menu. And going into my camera settings, I need to ensure that the height of my camera, camera Z, and target Z are the same if I want to be looking horizontally along the horizon. I need to also make sure that the height of that reflects the true value of where my eye level would be in the space. So the first thing I need to do is determine what is the height of my floor. Often we'll have the height of our floor being zero to the current story, but when we're placing cameras, we're not placing them to the current story, we're actually placing them to the project zero. In this instance, my floor is actually set 1500 below the current story. And so to project zero, my floor is 16,500. Now if I'm suggesting that my eye height is about 1500, above the ground, I want to place my cameras at 18,000. 16,500 plus 1,500. So back to my camera, and I've already got it set at 18,000, which is what I want. I'm going to reduce this view cone a little bit, 
80 is nice, we get to see a lot, but it's not really realistic. I'm gonna change it to 70 degrees. This is a, a small space. And so it might seem a bit restricted, but that's why we have an animation as opposed to a single render. Now I'm going to create this animation as if it was walking in the front door. To place my camera, the first place I click places the instance or where the camera is situated. The second time I place or click places where I'm looking, so the orientation or the direction. Now it does not matter how far apart I place the instance to the view direction. I can place it very close together or I can place it a long way apart. This is important when we're changing our view, but when we're looking horizontally it doesn't matter. Now I'm not being very careful here with how I'm placing my cameras and I'm sort of allowing them to be in a bit of a, a strange pattern. And we're just going to have a look at how this makes us feel when we're viewing our space. You notice that I'm placing a camera camera in a in an awkward sort of arrangement if I was trying to walk. I'm placing these more than in a natural walking pattern. I'm placing these cameras as if I'm in a helicopter, you could say. So I'm walking around the room and looking away from my direction and sometimes even behind me as opposed to looking where I'm walking which is more natural. So I've placed a few cameras. We, we first need to test to see that these cameras are doing what we want them to do. So to do that we're going to use the OpenGL window and not the Lightworks render engine because it's a lot faster. So we go to document, creative imaging, create fly through. Again I want to view this with the 3D window not the photo rendering window. If I change this to keyframes only we can see that I've placed 14 cameras or 15 cameras and if I click with in between frames it's taking that to 141 which means I've actually got 10 in between frames. So 10 frames between each camera. So it's multiplying the amount of single views or renders that I'm taking and they'll be added together like an animation to create uh, the effect of movement. That's all I want to do for now. I don't need to add any more detail. I'm never going to go show. I'm always going to press save even if it's just a test. That way I can save my tests and as I get better and change my cameras to make it more smooth or to see more information, I can then compare it to the last and make sure that I'm making the quality more advantageous. Let's press save. Thankfully with a, a photo render, sorry, with a fly through animation compared to a photo render, this saves before we start, not at the end, which hopefully will prevent us from losing too much information. Let's just save this to the desktop. and we'll call it test1. We're now watching as our computer processes this animation. So we're flying through the space frame by frame and the computer's working it out. It's generally not a good idea to sit and watch this because you'll just hurt your eyes because the computer's working, we don't need to do anything. So this is a really good time to take a break. Maybe go get a, a cup of coffee or tea. Just don't bring it back to your computer. If I was super clever, I could speed up this part of the video tutorial so we don't have to watch this happen. I'm not really that clever, so, or at least not yet. I might need a bit more practice. We see there's some things that are already a bit strange and we don't often notice this until we start doing a render, but my taps, my taps look incredibly rusted and covered with algae, but what's in fact happening is they're, they're being covered by a painting, a, a texture surface that I've got. 
really I want those to be made of chrome. So that might be something that I fix before I do my next test. I have to look around the room as well and see if there's anything else that's a bit wrong, see if there's anything else that's not quite accurate. Mostly it's okay. One of the other things I'm going to have to change when I do my final render is that I don't want a static background out of my windows in an animation because it will look wrong. I've got a few options therefore I can just make it a plain color out my window. Therefore animations work really well when I'm trying to show that it's a night render because we can just make it black outside and it tends to work really well. Short of that, if we want it to look like a daytime render, we need to not have a still image, but we need to create a virtual environment behind our view. Here we go. It's just about there. And that's the end of our animation test. So let's just jump to the desktop quickly and see what this movie looks like. Here we go. So the speed that we were looking at in our preview window before wasn't the speed of the actual animation but it was the speed of what our animation was doing to process it. This is the real speed and this gives us a, a true indication of whether our model is, our animation is too fast or too slow. Don't worry about the funny light spheres in the middle of our render. They will disappear when we do a photo render. Let's look at that one more time and we'll see that the path isn't very smooth. It's a bit jittery. I'm jumping because my eye position and my target keep turning too sharply. And so that's something I'm going to try to fix next time. All right. So using that as a reference, let's just cancel that for a second. Using that as a reference, we're going to go back into our model, back to our floor plan, and now we can change our cameras to make this a bit smoother. But we're going to save that for the next video because I think that's enough for now.